Hey there and welcome back to Author Journey. My name is CJ Anaya and today we are going to discuss how to outline a novel. And I'm doing this tutorial because of the popularity of my other tutorial where I discussed how to outline a series. So I'm going to take you through the basics of outlining a novel, the things that you need to include. Um, this is the bare minimum but it also is going to give you a really great idea of, of what needs to be included in your outline, what really needs to be included in your novel, and it breaks it up step by step into different pieces so that you know what you need to include and how to do it and in which order to do it in, which I think is helpful. So that's going to give you a frame of reference as far as getting that story out when you can do things step by step. It helps a lot. There is a fly in here that is totally going to distract me now. Okay, so... The first 25% of your novel, the thing that you need to ask yourself when you are beginning to start this whole thing, you've got questions that need to be answered. So who is your protagonist? And you need to figure that out right away, especially if there are multiple main characters. And when I say that, what I mean is a love interest. This usually applies more to romance. So you've got a protagonist and then a love interest. So, so think of that, consider that. What is their character archetype or backstory? So are they the librarian? Uh, are they the chief? And, and I, I have left references for you guys before on books that you can look at to determine character archetypes. And again, just to, just to review if this is the first time you've ever come to my channel, character archetypes are psychological profiles for specific types of personality traits or, or behaviors. So if a person is a chief, they're going to behave one way based on who they are and the way that their background has been formed, their experiences. The librarian's gonna behave a different way and react to things in a different way. So figure that out and then do some character mapping, okay? So that you've got some backstory but you don't necessarily need to include all that backstory in there. Then you're gonna ask yourself, what is their main want or need? What do they want most? What do they need most? There is a bit of a difference between a want and a need. So what you want doesn't necessarily mean that you need it. I want chocolate constantly. Do I need it? No, not at all. And my waist tells me that daily. So what is the main goal of the book? The thing that must be achieved by the end of the book. So you need to answer these questions. It's going to be so helpful if you write the question down and then answer it so that you'll have it just laid out right there. What is the main conflict or obstacle preventing your protagonist from achieving the main goal, want, and need? Okay, so your, your character has wants, they have needs, and then a huge overarching goal for the book. Something has to be solved. And then there's going to be a major obstacle that is not going to allow any of that to happen. Your character, it's going to thwart your character throughout the entire book, okay? So make sure that you list these because you are going to present this information within the first 25% of your novel. Now if you've got a, an 80,000 word novel, then, then by 20,000 words, this all needs to be in there at some point. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to, how to organize that. So I'm taking my book, Marry Your Billionaire, as an example. My protagonist is Madeline Knightley. She wants to finish up her degree, okay? She wants to be a novelist. She wants to finish up her degree at school. She needs money now that her scholarship has lost its funding. So she's been chugging along, doing great, and all of a sudden the scholarship that has been helping her survive without the assistance of her dad has, has dried up, and she has no idea why. She just knows that she is out of money and out of funds. She, she has to figure out a way to get that now so she can finish school. The goal is to get access to her trust fund that she walked away from so long ago so she can pay for the rest of her college tuition. The main obstacle or conflict, she uh, can't have her trust fund back until she agrees to fill in for a contestant on her dad's reality TV series, okay? So the caveat here, the catch for her is she's gonna have to return to her dad, play nice with him, and uh, eventually get her trust fund back if she agrees to his terms. So that's that's the main conflict. And she can't have, she can't achieve her goal. Uh, she can't achieve the goal of getting that trust fund if she doesn't do this. Her dad's causing a lot of problems. Love interest, or main character as well, Brody Prescott. He wants to save his business by getting rid of the scandal caused by a disgruntled date. 
He needs a wife to repair his image. And so the goal is to be The Bachelor on Marry Your Billionaire, this reality TV show that Midge's dad, Madeline's dad, is producing, um, and, and find a wife so that he can save his business. Oh, going back up. Sorry. So the main obstacle, I'm sorry, I thought that you would be able to see that. Basically, the main obstacle or the conflict is that the girl he wants to marry isn't there to find a husband, and she wants to be eliminated, okay? So he has found Madeline on this show. He actually meets her before that. He's very intrigued. He's found her on this show. He wants her, and she wants to be eliminated. So the conflict for him is figuring out a way to keep her there so he can get what he wants uh, without having to eliminate her. Because if he eliminates her, he can't be with the wife that he wants to be with. So how, how do you set this up? How do you take all of these wants, needs, goals, who these characters are, and set it up and get it all out there within the first 25% of the book? You need some hero action in the beginning. So you're going to introduce the protagonist or the main characters right away and put the character in the middle of a conflict. It can be related to the main conflict, but it isn't actually the main conflict. It's just like a side thing, a, a problem that needs to be solved. Just anything that will give us a, a feel for, for who the character is, how they react to certain things. It can also reveal heroic characteristics of that person. For example, I read a book one time where the protagonist was a female lawyer and, no, lobbyist? I think it was lawyer. And she's driving and there's a car wreck and she dives off this bridge to save these children from drowning. It had very little to do with the main conflict, but it was a very gripping way to get into the story. And eventually she meets the father of these children and he helps her with her main conflict of the book. But we see amazing uh, characterization here and growth and development and we, we see characteristics that are heroic in our protagonist and, and in her when she was selflessly, you know, risking her life to save these kids. So it doesn't have to be as dramatic as that. It could be something completely different, like someone going to the store, uh, picking up a pregnancy test because they think maybe they're pregnant and they can't do that because their family would have a cow and freak out. You know, that could be a conflict too. Just anything that pulls us in, brings us in, and requires your protagonist to solve the problem. Just a side small conflict immediately, okay? This gives the reader a feel for, for character uh, through action and through dialogue. It's very helpful and it pulls us right in so we're not bored, okay? We don't want to, you don't want your people to, your readers to put the book down. You can also use a prologue to hint at future conflict for the protagonist. So if there is something that you need to reveal but it's out of sequence, it happened before, uh, the, the setting of when your story for your protagonist starts, then just use the prologue to start things off with conflict, with a bang, okay? I've seen that happen a lot. I've used it a lot. Reveal the character's wants and needs through internal or external dialogue, really through both, because you, you're going to want the character's thoughts. We, as the reader, we want to know what they're thinking and feeling, how they're reacting emotionally to, to outside influencers. And then we want that external dialogue, that banter, because it reveals characterization, and then it shows us how they play off of other people and what those other people's relationships are, these secondary characters. Okay, so you're going to introduce secondary characters, if applicable, however many you need to, to set the stage here. Inciting incident. This is the moment when an event occurs that changes the trajectory of your your character. It changes the status quo. So your character's chugging along, doing what they're doing, and all of a sudden it it just stops everything and and changes their happy, peaceful, everyday lives, much like, you know, Midge finding out or Madeline finding out that her funding is off. That's not the inciting incident. It's a problem. But, you know, just something that, that makes it so that all of a sudden life is not so happy, life is not so wonderful, and it's going to launch them on their journey. So this is also where the main goal and conflict are presented. So now your readers know what your character is going to be fighting for or working toward for the rest of the book. We need to know within that first 25% what this book is about, what the main point is, what it is your protagonist is fighting for. Because if we don't know 
by the very end of that 25%, what the point of this book is, it's going to be very difficult to continue reading. We're going to be sitting there thinking, why? What is the point? What, what are we doing? Even if a reader doesn't know that that's what they're looking for, instinctively, we want to understand what the point and purpose is. What is the point of the journey that they are now taking and going on? So this inciting incident is, is very important, and that's when you're going to bring it in, about the end of that 25%. So the next 50% of your book is, is the proactive phase of your book, and it's comprised of tries and fails for your character. So your character is trying and failing and trying and failing to solve this problem. And, and there's going to be added layers and dimensions in there, but essentially that's what it is. The, a story consists of lots of problems needing to be solved. So what you're going to do as you're, you're creating this outline, you need to brainstorm and come up with three to five things your character can do to achieve this main goal and overcome the main conflict, okay? Three to five things that they're gonna try to do. And, and they can have small wins. It's important to have small wins. Although it's really great to beat up your character and make it so that you're just so wrung out emotionally. You're like, oh my gosh, is this, is this character ever gonna get a break, okay? Th those are pretty good books. I like thrillers. That happens a lot in thrillers. Uh, come up with three to five things that will prevent your character from achieving the main goal and overcoming the main conflict. So we've got a series of advancements and then obstacles. Okay, so we're trying with these adv advancements, sometimes succeeding a little bit, but mostly failing because of these obstacles. So if they're trying to do something and accomplish something to get closer to achieving the end goal, then you need to come up with an obstacle that's going to just beat them back and prevent them from really making headway. So, you know, maybe one step forward, three steps back type of thing. And that's that's essentially the middle of your book, okay? So how can you continue to up the stakes and the conflict with each new obstacle? And that's really important in, in a novel, especially thrillers, mysteries, suspense. You really want to up the stakes. And remember that the ultimate stakes are death, okay? So... If that is somehow involved, that's that. I mean, that's the highest you can go when it comes to upping the stakes. So incorporate ways that you can do that, whether physically, emotionally, the, the death of a career. I've talked about that in other tutorials as well, how you can up the stakes. And, and death doesn't necessarily have to be literal death of a person, but obviously those are very high stakes. So how can you continue to up the stakes and the conflict with each new obstacle? In romance, what kind of misunderstandings can you can you bring up or cause between the two love interests to prevent them from getting along, to, to miscommunicate? You know, what, what types of things can happen? Because it's essentially a, a story based on how are these two finally going to be able to come together and form a relationship and make it work and make it last. So just, it's going to be based on your genre. So figure out what types of, of advancements and obstacles apply to that specific genre, okay? The last 25% of your book, the protagonist is faced with the darkest moment of the book. That point where we think that he or she might lose it all and things are beginning to unravel. There's no way to salvage this. It's the, you know, the, the very pinnacle of I've lost it all. I've lost everything and I'm never going to get that love of my life back. Or I'm going to lose all the people I love because I can't figure out where this bomb is and defuse it type of thing. Okay, so it's a game changer or a total twist in the tale moment. The protagonist never saw this last obstacle coming. It blindsides them and now they have to regroup and figure out how to how to overcome this. So the protagonist eventually rallies, overcomes any last conflicts to attain that goal and saves the day. And this ending will obviously vary based on the, the genre of book because in horror sometimes there is no saving the day. Sometimes people just die and nobody knows what the heck happened. Or in thrillers, you're, especially psychological thrillers, you're kind of left with that eerie sense of, okay, this could have ended this way or this way. There are a lot of different endings. There are open-ended endings, you know, twists in a tale. It'll just depend on your genre. But just make sure that you're, you're writing according to your readership, that you know what that market and that readership is expecting. Because hopefully you've read these books if you're writing them, okay? So you know what to expect and you know what they are expecting as well. So write accordingly based on what you know about that readership and what you like in these types of books. 
tie up loose ends and give readers a satisfying payoff or closure to the book, especially with romance where everybody's expecting happily ever after. Do not mess that up, okay? <laughs> there are some people who want to tear at your heart, but a lot of readers want a happy ending when it comes to fun, cheesy, cl um, cliche romances, I guess you could say, um, chick lit type of stuff. So, and then even in thrillers and mysteries, you know, you want to solve the mystery, wrap that up, tie up loose ends. If it's a series, you could have like one little plot layer um, dangling in the wind, maybe one thread that's not completely closed off so that you can go and open into a new book. But for the most part, for these standalones, you want that closure, all of the loose ends tied up, everything is, is figured out. And that, that's basically the outline of your book. Now that, that's the bare bones of what your outline should look like, okay? So when you are brainstorming and you really lay out that groundwork and you have it all written down, and it's so much easier to write it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stick to it because as you write, you're going to get new ideas and they could be better ideas. They could be different ideas when it comes to the obstacles and the advancements, okay? So I, I would just say at least come up with this so that you have a very firm idea of where you're going and what you're doing and you can completely avoid writer's block. Oh, everybody thinks it's a disease, but what it really is, is lack of preparation. That's what writer's block is, lack of preparation. Okay, so once you have that basic outline, add layers. So you've got the basic outline. Now let's talk about, you know, plot layers and secondary characters. So consider a plot layer for your protagonist. Um, subplots are for secondary characters. So plot layers are for protagonists, main characters. Subplots are for secondary characters. First plot layer for Madeline. This is an example of for Marry Your Billionaire. Uh, there is someone, uh, someone, an, an unknown nemesis on the TV show who is trying to get rid of her through harassment and threats. So that's that's an underlying issue and a problem that needs to be overcome and solved. So a plot layer is, is another conflict that needs to be solved, okay? That's another issue for Madeline to deal with. She's got a second plot layer as well. She has been estranged from her father and his business for six years, and now she has to spend time with him and overcome her feelings of betrayal. So that's another issue that hopefully needs to be tied up by the end of the book. So by the end of the book, we need to figure out who is harassing Madeline and stop it from happening before she's killed. And we also need uh, her to eventually come to terms with what has happened between her and her father so that they can mend that relationship and, and fix things, forgive each other and move on. So these, these loose ends need to be tied up by the end of the book, but these extra layers give a lot of depth to her character, to the secondary characters, to the storyline as a whole. With each plot layer, come up with three to five things that will help your protagonist solve their problem and three to five things that will prevent them from solving that problem. Guys, this can be as simple as just dialogue and, and miscommunication. It doesn't have to be a huge, crazy event. And I'm talking about three to five things in the sense that brainstorm it so that you have a lot of options. You don't have to use all of it in the story. Just have a lot of options available to you, giving you ideas of things that could happen to, to help this situation, to fix this problem, or to create setbacks for this problem. For a first-time novelist, I recommend that you keep the plot layers at one, maybe two, okay? Don't, don't get crazy. Don't get crazy on me. Don't complicate things because you have to tie up all of these layers by the end of the book. So you're weaving all of this together, and all of this has to have something to do with the main conflict as well. You know, obviously it's all going to tie in, hopefully. So it's kind of like these nodes of conjunction, like these areas where they cross and they come together and they weave out, and it just makes for a very tight... Uh, compelling read when you write it like that. Adding other layers to the outline. This is for your secondary characters, okay? So come up with secondary characters, but only create subplots for the most important ones. You do not want to create a subplot for every single secondary character that is, is there unless you're a crazy genius and you have the time and you can do that. You just, you don't need to do that. That could be overkill at some point, okay? So Mitch's dad is a secondary character who wants to get his daughter back in his life by forcing her into a situation where she needs her trust fund. So that's this subplot is her dad trying to maneuver her and manipulate her in his own loving way to try to get his daughter back, okay? So that's a secondary character and that's his goal. Felicia is, is the nemesis 
So Felicia and her minion want Madeline off the show so Felicia, Felicia can marry Brody. So we've got a villain here uh, who is, and, and she's got a little helper. And so throughout this book, there's a bit of a mystery as to who is attacking Madeline. And of course, Felicia is so obvious, but the minion who is working with her is not so obvious. So this is very important as, as it goes throughout the story because it's a subplot that once again, Madeline is dealing with from a plot layer perspective, but also we're seeing things from Felicia's perspective as well. So this is all written in third person, and we get chapters from Midge's perspective, from uh, Brody's perspective, from Felicia's perspective, and from this minion's perspective, which happens with suspense. You'll, you'll see things from different points of view. I wouldn't get crazy with a lot of characters, but this was fun and it, it was needed, so I had a good time with that. So for each subplot or secondary character, Think of three to five things your secondary character needs to accomplish this goal. It's the same process. With every conflict you're introducing, whether it's the main conflict or main goal, whether it's the plot layer conflict and main goal or the secondary subplot layer and main goal, you always want to think of three to five things that will help your secondary character or whatever character you're dealing with accomplish the goal and three to five setbacks. So advancements, setbacks, tries, fails, obstacles, achievements, okay? Think of three to five things that could thwart them in this goal. You don't have to use all of them. Just brainstorm and list them in the outline because the more ideas you have, the more material you have to work with. And that is a bonus when it comes to writing. So if you can start with all of this laid out and outlined, it's gonna be so much easier to write from point A to point B to point C. And then once you have that rough draft figured out, then you can really go through and like flesh out the scenes with really great dialogue and really great orchestration. Help us with setting, help us with sense, you know, use, use what we're seeing to pull us into the, or what your characters are seeing to pull us into the scene, what they're tasting, what they're smelling, you know, all, use all of that, but that comes later as you flesh it all out, okay? This means you need to know these secondary characters' backstories, their wants, goals, and needs as well. I'm seeing a typo. Sorry, that was distracting me. Okay, tie up these subplots by the end of the book. And if the villain gets their comeuppance, then you need to include that in the end as well because that is all part of the payoff. That is all part of uh, our readers getting what they want out of this book and, and putting that closure together. So the villain needs to get what they deserve in the end. And sometimes with series, the villain doesn't really get what they deserve until the very end of that book, okay? And then again, check for genres. It's always gonna be a little bit different, but this is the basic outline when it comes to brainstorming, adding other layers. This is, this is basically it. Now, I'm not talking about uh, character development, uh, development in romance. There are a lot of other moving parts when it comes to actually writing the book, when it comes to pacing, flow, dialogue, setting, the way that you're able to bring out the character's voice. There's, there's just a lot of moving parts, but this is the outline phase and this will help you get started. And at least you can go through this video tutorial as many times as you want, write it down, copy it, whatever you need to do so that you have a checklist of all the things that you need to have before you start writing, okay? So I hope that this helped you. Please comment below if it did, like the video if you thought it was helpful, subscribe if you're new to the family, uh, ask me questions if you want to. I, I did this because I had someone ask me again if I would finally do a, an outline for a book and I, and I did it, I'm so sorry it took me so long. I've had other people ask me to do uh, more analysis of Harry Potter books and other books and I will work on that but that will require me to actually read them again. <laughs> And that's going to take up some time. So I, I would need to read and go through and start marking where things are happening at specific points. But I do think it would be a great learning process for everyone if I was able to do that with different books. And then you could see really how outlines pay off and where things are happening at specific places. Just analyzing that is super helpful. So I will work on more videos like that as soon as I have time to read those books. <laughs> So anyway, I hope you guys have a fabulous day, that you get to outlining, and that it's so much easier now that you have this blueprint to work with. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.